Hi, I'm Carl Vaders, and welcome to the first episode of The Church Lobby, Conversations on Faith and Ministry. Well, this is a big change for us. Uh, it's, it's a title change, and uh, hopefully, uh, if you heard the last bonus episode, you understand why. And if not, we're going to go over it in significant detail in this episode. Again, this will be a solo episode, just me talking with you. And secondly, it will be shorter than usual, uh, because we want to introduce you to what we're doing with this name change, why it's happening, what benefits you can uh, get out of it. But in addition to that, I also want to let you know that there are some big things coming up in 2023. If you're listening to this shortly after it comes out in January of 2023, I want you to know in this coming year, uh, we're going to be expanding this ministry in some significant ways. First, uh, I'm going to be putting out my new book this year. It'll be coming out in October 2023. This will be book number five. Um, yes, we have a title. No, I'm not going to tell you right now, but we will be letting our listeners and our sponsors know the title, see the cover, and be a part of the launch team earlier than everybody else. So if you want to be a, a part of that, and if you want to hear what's coming up, we've got some really exciting things coming up in the new book that will be coming out in October 23. Also, partway through the year, we're going to start a telling you about some really big news about an expansion of this ministry that will be launching in a huge way in January 2024. Again, not enough information on that to lay out for you now, um, but partway through the year, we're going to start sharing that with you. And that will be, first of all, to our listeners, to our sponsors, and to the subscribers in our newsletter. So if you really want to get the upfront stuff and you aren't yet subscribed to our newsletter at carlvaders.com, do that and you'll get all the information really early. We've got some really exciting stuff that we're launching in 2024, and we'll be spending 2023 preparing for it and letting you know the details as we go along. Now, in the meantime, let's take a look at this particular podcast and its name change and why is it that we are going to be calling this podcast The Church Lobby from this point on. There are four primary reasons. Let me walk you through them. Reason number one why we're calling this The Church Lobby is this. The church lobby is the place where the church meets first and last. Think about it. Where do we have most of our conversations about faith and ministry? They take place in the church lobby. Before church and after church, we chat in the church lobby. The church lobby is where we meet each other when we first walk in the building, where we talk about what happened during the week, where we talk about what's going to happen in the service coming up. And after the service, it's where we talk about what happened in the service and what's coming up next week. The church lobby is where we meet with other people and decide, where are we going to go for lunch today? It's where we sign up for small groups. It's where we sign up for ministry teams. As, as I said last week, it's where the things that we talk about in the pulpit put their boots on in the church lobby. For brand new people, when they come into a church, they might watch online, but they get the first in real life physical idea of what the new of what their church is like when they walk into the church lobby. That pulpit is not their first experience of the church. The sanctuary is not the first experience of the church. The first experience of the church and church people typically takes place in the church lobby. And the church lobby is the last place we're in before we leave the church building to go out and to do life and ministry. A lot of the life of the church happens in the church lobby. So that's reason number one why we're calling that this uh, this this podcast by that name, that's a better way to phrase it, is because it's a great place where a whole lot of uh, the the face-to-face -face conversations about life and ministry happen in the church. It happens in the church lobby. Reason number two we're renaming it the church lobby is this. A church lobby is a great place to take the temperature of a church's health. It's not the only way to take the temperature of a church's health. It's not even the best way, but it is one of the ways that we can take the temperature of a church's health. I've been pastoring for over 40 years, and I've been traveling and speaking at churches for over 10 years. And especially in the last 10 years of travel from church to church and place to place, I have discovered that I can find out more about the health of a church from the church's lobby than I realized I possibly could. For instance, there are some things you can find out about the health of a church by watching their online service. 
But you're really only finding out what that church wants you to find out when you watch the online service. It's the stuff that made it on stage, and it's the stuff that wasn't edited out before they showed you the service, right? It's a very finely tuned representation of what the church wants you to believe they are like. Hopefully, it's an accurate picture, but it's not a full warts and all picture. That's not the manner of what happens on stage or what happens online. If you want the real church warts and all, you don't get that until you show up in the church lobby. That's where that real church really starts to show up in a whole lot of people's lives. And it tells you whether a church is healthy, and it often tells you a whole bunch of places where the church might be unhealthy. So let's walk through those two things. First of all, how does it determine and show you whether or not a church is healthy? In a healthy church, the church lobby is where we connect with each other, where we learn from each other, where we build relationships among uh, fellow church members, where we might pray for each other when we see that someone is feeling down. The church lobby is where we'll sign up for a new ministry. It's where we'll sign up for a small group. You can really learn what matters most to a church from the church lobby. It might be where they have the statement of faith printed up or their missionary board. Uh, it tells you their value systems in a church lobby. A church lobby is where people uh, bring donations of food, where they bring donations of clothes when they have a food or clothing drive. It, the church lobby is where you greet new people and make them feel welcome and a part of the church. It's where you say hello to old friends or where you welcome people who haven't been in the church for years to let them know they're fully welcome back into the congregation again. After the church service, it's where we have conversations. It's where we ask questions and hopefully in a healthy church is where those questions are, are answered and struggled with, and it's okay to express doubts and uncertainty and questions to others and find a warm reception. In a healthy church, all of that happens in the church lobby. In an unhealthy church, all this stuff happens in a church lobby as well, but it happens in some very, very different ways. In an unhealthy church, a church lobby may be where you have had some of your hardest times in church. For most people, when you think about maybe you left a church because it was difficult or you're in a church that's difficult now, in most situations, the primary difficulty isn't happening in the sanctuary while the service is on. In most situations, the primary difficulties are happening before and after the church service in the church lobby. And we need to talk about those aspects of church life as well. If you're a pastor, a church lobby may be where you were interrupted with a problem right before the church service that made it hard for you to preach that day. If you're a pastor, a church lobby may be where you were confronted after a service about what you said during the sermon or what you failed to say during the sermon or what you didn't say correctly during the sermon according to the person who's confronting you in the church lobby. Again, if you're a pastor, a church lobby may be where you were told you were no longer going to be serving as the pastor of the church or where you decided to quit the church in frustration. For a lot of pastors, you may feel safer in the pulpit than you feel in the church lobby. So while the church lobby can be a sign of great health for a healthy church, it's also one of the primary places where the bad things happen in an unhealthy church. A church lobby may be where new people who come to church for the first time find out for the first time really quickly that they really don't belong here. And we need to talk about the difficult aspects of that as much as we talk about the good aspects of that. Now, in addition to a regular church service, church lobbies are also where pastors talk to each other before and after conferences. Most church conferences are not held in conference halls. They're held in churches. Uh, many of our denominational conferences are held in churches. So we go to a pastoral conference and the church lobby of that conference may be where we decide uh, which workshop we're going to go to, uh, what we thought about the main speaker that we just heard. Uh, it may be where you meet uh, fellow pastors that you haven't met in a long time and you catch up since last year. In denominational conferences, let's talk about this for sure. This absolutely happens. In denominational conferences, the church lobby is where the real decisions get made. They're confirmed in votes but the decisions are made in conversations in the church lobby. We know this. But again, let's just say it out loud. And let's acknowledge that that's part of the way that we function as the body of Christ. A whole lot of those things happen in the church lobby. In other words, if it matters in the church, 
It happens in the church lobby. And those are the kinds of conversations we want to have here. We want to have honest conversations, unfiltered conversations. We're not running after controversy. We've never done that before, and we will not do that now. We want to have substantial conversations, beneficial conversations, helpful conversations. We're not going to be, you know, triggering anger just to get, you know, click throughs. That's not the way we do this. But we want to have honest conversations. And by naming ourselves the church lobby, we want to remind ourselves that this is a place where those honest conversations can take place. All right? So those are two reasons. The third reason we're calling this the church lobby is that this new name shifts the emphasis of our pastoral conversations from the pulpit and from the formal uh, organized service to a much less formal, less organized, but maybe more honest conversational tone that we tend to have within the church lobby. There's a lot that's written about and there's a lot that's spoken about how to behave well in the church pulpit, how to put on a good church service, and that's important. Uh, and But that's being done. There's a ton of places. If you want to know how to preach better, ton of places to go for that. If you want to know how to put on a better service, tons of places to go for that. But if you want to have the honest conversations that are often not written about or spoken about out loud, the kind of things that pastors talk to each other about in the church lobby or that congregations talk with each other about in the church lobby, this is what we want to provide a, a safe space for here. Uh, we want to have uh, we want to shift the emphasis of our pastoral conversations, not to deny the importance of the pulpit or the service, but to add to it these kinds of conversations we can have one with another. Uh, it, it really want I really want to shift the conversation from the place where we're separated from each other, which quite happens quite frankly, happens when we're preaching to a place where we're not separated from each other so much, which is the church lobby. Just think about it physically. When you're in a church service, the pastor behind the pulpit is physically separated from people. Even the phrase behind the pulpit means in most churches, there's a physical barrier of a pulpit between the, the, the pastor and the congregation. They're usually elevated a few inches, maybe several feet above the congregation. They're usually separated from the front row by several feet or even several yards. In large churches, people don't even look at the pastor on stage. They look at the screen because the screen is actually uh, more visible and more apparent to their eyes than the actual physical pastor is. There is a physical separation that takes place when you're in the church service between the pastor and the congregation. But in the lobby, in a healthy church anyway, there that sep a lot of that separation is and should be removed. That's where the pastor is literally physically standing on the same level as the congregation. Hopefully that's where the pastor is walking through the lobby and talking and sharing and meeting people. And there's less of a barrier that happens. And we want to remove that barrier in our conversations as well. So that shift of emphasis is another reason why we're naming it the church lobby. So those are three reasons. Reason number four then is this, and I'm going to be really simple and really honest with you. The fourth reason we're calling it the church lobby quite simply is it was available. Yeah, it was available. We looked through a whole bunch of other possible names for this podcast before we landed on this one, and several pretty good ones, well, because they were pretty good, somebody else had already used that title. Uh, so titles are hard. Uh, good titles are harder, and good titles that feel familiar but aren't already being used, but that's almost impossible. And when we landed on the church lobby, nobody else was using it. Uh, there are no other podcasts out there, at least as of the point that I'm talking to you right now, none that I could find anyway. So simply it being available, and yet when you hear it, you kind of know right up front what it's going to be about. So that was, you know, fourth reason that we're doing it. It was available and it just sounded really good to our ears. So let's let's wrap this up, shall we? As I mentioned in the previous bonus episode, which was the final episode of Can This Work in a Small Church, I mentioned then that really other than the title, you won't notice a whole lot of big changes. We are going to be uh, expanding um, what we're talking about, uh, but we were going to be doing that anyway, talking to people who aren't necessarily coming from a small church perspective, but we are coming from a small church perspective, so we'll, we'll always be run through that filter. So we'll always be coming from a small church perspective. We will always be speaking primarily to those in a small church context. Uh, we're going to keep the lightning round. We're going to continue to have great interviews with church leaders. It will continue to come out every two weeks. 
Um, we're going to have topics that will be of a, a special help for those who are in small churches, but will also help anyone in church ministry. Uh, we're even going to keep the same theme music. So if you've been around before, you won't notice a whole lot of changes, but hopefully it will welcome others into this conversation who haven't been comfortable in the conversation before. And we hope as we continue on that you will continue to join us and we look forward to meeting with you in the church lobby. This episode was produced by Veronica Beaver. It was edited by Phil Vaders. Original theme music was written and performed by Jack Wilkins of jackwilkinsmusic.com. The graphic design is by Solomon Joy. And me, I'm Carl Vaders, and I hope to talk with you again in the church lobby. Music